Are you a college student or recent graduate who wants to see the world before starting your career? I'll show you how to become a language assistant so you can travel the world, meet new people, and get international work experience. In today's video, you'll learn what a language assistant is, the pros and the cons of teaching English after college, and how to apply to be a language assistant. I'm Jamie from ESL Teacher 365. I've taught in six different countries in the past 10 years and I love helping people do the same. Whether you want to go abroad for a few months or 365 days, I can help you make a plan and build your confidence. To learn all my teach abroad secrets, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. The first step to become a language assistant is to understand what a language assistant is. A language assistant is a native English speaker that's placed in a school to assist the non-native English teachers. Depending on your program, you may be teaching all English classes or other subjects, but in English. In my Spanish schools, I got the chance to teach science, social studies, and art. I really enjoyed it because we got to do different science experiments and projects with the kids, and of course, arts and crafts class is always a lot of fun. Part of your job as an assistant is to help students improve their grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation in English. Because you're working with teachers that aren't native speakers, a lot of times they'll just kind of say, hey, insert your name here, how do you say this word correctly? And they'll just have you pronounce it over and over again. You're also expected to share your cultural traditions with the students. So this means that you need to create lessons about St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, definitely Halloween. Your responsibility in the classroom is really going to vary from program to program and school to school. In one of my schools in Spain, I was basically the teacher. I was expected to prepare the lessons and to give the lessons while the other teacher just kind of sat at her desk. And in the other program, I was placed in a room by myself and the kids would come in one at a time to talk with me about pretty much anything. As you can see, it's very, very different depending on the program and your school. To become a language assistant, you're going to complete an application, maybe do an interview depending on the program, and then once you're accepted, you'll start your visa process. Depending on the program, you may get a work visa or a student visa. Under the student visa, you're often allowed to work in a school because you're receiving a stipend instead of a salary. Teaching English abroad after college usually requires you to have a bachelor's degree. There are some exceptions. Some of these programs will allow you to teach while you're still enrolled in college, but in general, you're going to want to have a bachelor's degree. If you don't have a bachelor's degree, don't worry because in next week's video, I'm gonna talk all about teaching English abroad without a degree. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons of teaching after college as a language assistant. My number one pro is that you get a visa to live in another country. Trust me, I have lived in six different countries with multiple different visas for each country and it's not easy. Being a language assistant is one of the easiest ways to get a visa to live abroad. Another pro is that depending on the program, you're going to be working as few as 12 hours a week up to 30, 40, but it really depends on the program. The programs that I did in Spain, my first one, I worked for 26 hours a week, and the other one I only worked for 16 hours a week. Because you're working so few hours, you often have a day off per week to travel. My final pro is that you're going to gain very valuable international work experience. This looks great on a resume and can definitely help you in the future. All right, let's start talking about some of the cons. A lot of these programs don't allow you to choose where you're going to be placed. You may not be able to choose the area of the city you want, the city you want, or even the region you want. If you want to go somewhere very specific, I would not recommend applying to these programs. Another thing that isn't so great is you may have too much responsibility or not enough responsibility. Even though you're teaching assistant, you may basically be the teacher and responsible for marking assignments, creating curriculum, or you may actually just be shoved into a corner and pretty much ignored. The final con is that a lot of these programs have very low pay. 
This means that you're going to need to teach some private lessons on the side or teach English online to supplement your income. Do you want to know about other Teach Abroad programs besides the language assistant programs? Well, then check out this video on how to get started teaching English abroad for lots of ideas. If you want to become a language assistant and teach English after college, then here are some of the best programs in Asia and Europe. In general, the Asian programs are going to have a lot of benefits, but you're going to be working more hours. The first program is the JET program. So this is in Japan. In this program, you're going to get a flight stipend, paid holidays, and a competitive salary. There is a bit of a focus on embracing the Japanese culture. So they are looking for people who are interested in learning about Japan as well as teaching English. The next program is called EPIC in South Korea. This one is very competitive with a competitive salary to match and a lot of benefits and bonuses. This one does require you to have two years of teaching experience and a TEFL. If you don't have teaching experience, a TEFL, or even your degree yet, you can still work in South Korea through the TALK program. This program places teachers in underprivileged elementary schools. Finally, the last Asian program that I recommend is called NET and it's in Hong Kong. You're going to receive a lot of benefits, but you're going to be teaching in primary or secondary schools with very large class sizes. Now let's talk about the European programs. You're going to be paid less, but you're going to be working fewer hours and have more opportunities to travel. The first program is the Cultural Ambassadors program in Spain or also called the AUX program. So this is the one that I did for one year and I was placed in a school that was about 50 minutes outside of Madrid. You do get one day off a week, which is great if you want to travel or teach some private lessons. With this program, you don't receive a salary, but you do get a stipend and health insurance. The stipend is usually between 700 and 1000 euros, depending on how many hours you teach and the region where you're teaching. A similar program is the Tapif program in France. This one you're going to be teaching 12 hours per week, which means you do get a day off. However, there is a language requirement and you're required to have an intermediate level of French. Finally, there's the Central European Teaching Program in Hungary. You can choose a six or 10 month contract and there's a lot of nice benefits for this one, including a European work visa. If you're ready to be a language assistant, then check out my blog post in the description down below. It'll have links where you can apply to all of the programs mentioned. I hope you found today's video helpful and are now ready to apply to some of these programs. If you need any help during the application process, please send me an email at jamie at eslteacher365.com. I have so many Teach Abroad secrets to share with you, so make sure to follow my blog and my Instagram at eslteacher365 and join my Facebook group, which helps teachers teach English abroad and online. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Happy teaching, and remember, the world is yours to teach and explore.